Roger Duke. Emco's on the scene. A little nervous. <laughs> How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you too. What's up guys, Mitchell Pelkey back with another video down here, Duke with the one and only Emily Cole, you guys have seen it. Today we're gonna do a little mukbang action, get some food at Wu, and dive into your guys' questions. Yeah, so this is like the place to go on campus. Wu is, it's my favorite building, but it has the best food in the country. Don't fight me on that. <laughs> Come on. All right, here we are, folks. We're gonna do a little mukbang action. For everyone out there that doesn't know what mukbang is, basically we eat some sort of a meal and have a good conversation, but towards the end, we're gonna answer your guys' questions, so, so stay tuned for that. What do we get on the menu today? I uh, got an egg white omelet. I got some fruit, too. We got the Emco special. I got an egg white omelet, a lot of veggies, and some toast. Are you nervous? No. Okay, good, good. <laughs> so start it off. How, how you been? We haven't seen each other in almost six months. What's new? I've been good. Um, I'm in the thick of my track season right now, so I had ACCs last weekend, and it was super fun. We got to host it on our home track, and it's a super special race. So next weekend, I'll be racing in Indiana for the chance to potentially go to nationals. Which hey, and a school record? Yeah. You can't I, fly by that. Come on, <laughs> talk about that. In the race at ACCs, I, like, I knew it was gonna be a special race because I had been feeling really good in training leading up to it. I ended up having like a 30 second PR hey. um, and I got the school record and I got second. I was seated fifth coming in, so it was really fun and I'm just really glad my family got to be there for that. Good, good, good. Now towards the end of the school year, how'd you finish up grades wise? Good, yeah. Good. My classes were good. I'm excited for the summer a little break, get to focus on my book, but yeah. how have you been? What have you been up to? I've been good. Um, obviously, I think the fans know, you know, the season didn't turn out as we planned. Um, we ended up making the tournament. You guys have probably all seen that video, which is really cool. Played Cornell up in Ithaca and it didn't go away. We ended up losing, which stinks. Hung out with the seniors, got to get uh, kind of the last hoorah with them and then came home and this is five days later hanging out with you. So I knew we had to get something going. Uh, this was like super last minute. Um, I had something planned this weekend and then that fell through. And um, Yeah, he texted me like three days ago. He was like, I'm gonna be in, in Durham. I was like, what? Yeah. And then I texted her three days ago. I was like, hey, like, are you in town? Like, can we get together? It's also crazy that it ended up working out that we were like both free. Yeah. Both times. I know. <laughs> both times for formal and for this that we just both happened to be free like at this exact time on these weekends. Yeah, because I knew she would be here because like you guys know she posts a lot on Instagram stories so I saw her still here. It was a 50-50 shot. I thought you might be at a meet or something but yeah. it all worked out. Yeah, because we leave tomorrow for Indiana so. Mm -hmm. How's social been for your good? Yeah, it's been good. I feel like I've definitely taken a step back from it and have just been like focusing on running. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really glad that I have done. It's been really nice. I'm getting to like spend more quality time with my teammates and just kind of be more present with everybody. Also finishing up classes too. Mm -hmm. um, but I've had a lot of like little things here and there, um, like interviews and I did this cool ACC Network special. Yeah, I saw that. That was really fun to be a part of. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's always cool doing stuff and then like forgetting that it really happened and then like three weeks later it ends up coming yeah. out. And you're like, oh yeah, I did do uh, that. I like <laughs> that. Yeah. So the TikTok formal obviously was a pretty surreal moment. I think for both of us, nothing like that's ever happened yeah. to us. Has that, I don't wanna say like changed your life because I don't think it was like that monumental, but has it like yeah. pivoted your life in a way? I feel like it definitely made a lot more people like know who we were. Like mm. people will always yeah. recognize me now. I was yeah. like, oh, you're the formal girl with Mitchell. Yeah. Literally, I was warming up for, I guess it was our Duke invite meet. They were having a lacrosse game at the exact same time and the lacrosse stadium is literally right next door to our track yeah. stadium. And so I was like doing my strides right before my race and it was just like on the side. And this guy, I could tell he was like staring at me and I was like, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. And I run past him and he was like, Mitchell Pelkey. And that's all he said. Really? And I was like, okay, good talk. Yeah, yeah. like I don't know what just happened. I know, like stuff like that happens all the time. I still remember like the second game of our season, or first game of our season, we played Detroit Mercy. Yeah. It's like third quarter. I'm like going towards the crease and I have this short stick guarding me and like as I'm going to the crease he's like, hey man, big fan, like you and Emily are so cute oh together. I'm like, thanks man, like we're like, we're like playing now and he's like complimenting me and it's it so That's funny. amazing, at least um, it was nice. Yeah, yeah, nice. so it's like, going back to her point, like definitely from aspect of like people knowing our name, like I think TikTok just has that beast in them to just like yeah. really bring us out there. Like it, 
you can tell like which people know us now and which people don't like yeah i was talking to somebody the other day like if i would walk past somebody and they just stare at me for a good five seconds like you know like they know us yeah and uh it's still surreal like even going to like these lax games people are like asking about us and everything and it's not just like your mom's and like yeah people, it's also like, funny because like when you're around people that who like actually know you and who you're around all the time like it's been however long, whatever, six months, and so yeah. like we, t we talk about other things, you know? Mm -hmm. But you can tell when it's someone who like doesn't really know you or you haven't like haven't seen in forever because yeah. they're like, so, like, what about yeah, Mitchell? Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I know, like, we, I got home, went out to dinner with um, my boys and their moms, and it got to like a silent part in like the night, and it was like, so I gotta ask, what's the deal with you and Emily? I'm like, just ask it regularly. <laughs> So it's always like little things like that, but I think it's like, it's fun. Do people like still continuously like come up to you and ask about that type of stuff? Oh yeah. I mean, I had like a little kid ask me like a few days ago. It's just adorable. Yeah. Like I'm so grateful for like the experience because yeah. it was such like a once in a lifetime opportunity and you're a great guy. Mm -hmm. And now we have like, I don't know, a great relationship that yeah. has come out of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And I feel like it's also something that no one else could ever like be able to relate to or really yeah, understand. Replicate, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like something so like, Unique, I don't know, it's like something like I'll never forget for sure. Summer's coming up, do you got any summer plans? Everything is kind of up in the air just because of racing, but mm -hmm. I do have like, I'm supposed to do a, I'm going to the NIL Summit for two days. Oh yeah, I'm going to that, you I'll tell you that. Okay, yeah, yeah. sick, yeah. I'm glad you were able, I like, I'm glad I told you about it, cause yeah. I think that's gonna be so fun yeah. and like such a great like way to meet other athletes mm -hmm. too. Immediately after that, I fly like from Atlanta to Colorado for like a three week service program. There's this program called ACE, and it's between Duke and Stanford, and they send five Duke athletes and five Stanford student athletes to a foreign country to do three weeks of service. But this year they're doing their first ever program in Colorado, and I'm really psyched about that because we're gonna get to go and, and do service there and also get the training at altitude. So I'll be there for three weeks right after the okay. NIL summit. We're so similar in the way like we like love to grind. I think borderline like workaholics. We can't stop and like yeah. I don't know. Sometimes I'm going and going and going and like that's what I like to do. Like if I ever stop, I'm like, I gotta get work and I gotta get work. And so like, when we first met each other, like that's that's the thing, like we pointed out, like that's where we were very similar. Yeah. Chilling out for time. us is like not <laughs> a thing. And I think that's like cool though. Uh, something for myself is, is pretty similar, just like making collabs while continuing to practice lacrosse and work out and get ready for next season. And I think just fortunate to, to kind of come down here and do stuff like this. Do they give y'all like workouts right now? Yeah, today is the last day. So our season ended Sunday. Today is a week from Sunday, so seven days later, workouts actually start tomorrow. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I'll drive home tonight and kind of get back on the regiment and getting uh, prepared for the 2023 season. What's your team supposed to look like next year? We're losing a couple guys, but a lot of guys have that ability to kind of come back and take that fifth year, the COVID year. Yeah. So we'll still look good, we'll still be strong. Uh, we'll definitely get a couple guys in the transfer portal along with the next class coming to college, which will be really cool. Cool. Um, I'm just excited. I think it's like potentially my last year. I don't know if I'm taking the fifth year yet, the COVID year option. Oh, you're still thinking yeah. about it? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're kind of going into like my last like lacrosse season ever. It's like really weird. Yeah. Because it's been part of my life for like 20, yeah. 20 years. Book writing program I was in, there was yeah. a girl who wrote a book about the like that transition of like being athlete to like going into the normal world and like how hard it can be for athletes because it's so much of your life and so much of your identity and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden it's like poof. Mm -hmm. You have all this extra free time, you don't have like a regimented schedule, you don't have people giving you assigned workouts and a lot of people can have like an identity crisis with it. So it's something yeah. that I feel like a lot more people are talking about, just like yeah. that transition. Me and you have talked about, it. you know, somebody you look up to in this kind of content athlete, athlete world is, what's her name, that plays soccer at Baylor? You know who I'm talking about, come on. Ah, oh, you don't know who I'm talking about? Oh, 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 I, um, what? She played soccer at Baylor. She had created content and now she had creates YouTube videos around like her like still working out and everything. Yeah, no, I have no clue. You have no idea? About. No. Oh my I, God. You said Ross, like April Ross. I interviewed a no, girl named no, no, April no. Ross in my book, but that's not. This girl was at Baylor. She made like content and now she like does like health and fitness stuff. And you're like, I want to emulate her when I'm done, when I'm graduate. Kylie Ross. You don't know who Kylie Ross is? We had this conversation, no? Was, I've never seen her in my life. Oh my God, I must be delusional then. I could have sworn we had a conversation about it. <laughs> she did a good job that obviously played soccer at Baylor, it kind of did the whole day in the life, the whole student athlete style when she was in college. And now she's kind of transformed it into more the health and fitness side of it, still kind of emulating the athlete lifestyle, but has transformed it into like a, 
a cool win. I think that's something cool you're doing like with your book. I became super passionate about nutrition like my senior year of high school just because learning how to feel properly is definitely what helped me be able to mm -hmm. compete in college and I didn't really, that wasn't really an opportunity that was presented to me until my senior year. It was super late because I did volleyball and basketball up until my senior year. And so when I started focusing, started focusing on running and started eating well at the same time, I was really able to see significant time drops and was lucky enough to have the opportunity to come run here at Duke. So I just became really passionate about it and interested in the science behind sports nutrition and like how what you eat can really help your performance on the field. Yeah. And then also all of the like social and psychological aspects of it that come into play as well. Like whenever a lot of athletes start trying to eat healthy, since a lot of athletes are type A and like perfectionists, they can yeah. get way too into it and think that they need to eat like just chicken and broccoli all the time yeah. to be able yeah. to perform well. That's the guy's go-to. Yeah, and it's such a guy's go-to. <laughs> or like steak and broccoli, or salmon and broccoli. Yeah, Literally anything and broccoli. Anything like frozen and rice. Or you can microwave, <laughs> yeah. and just like quick and easy. Um, and it's just like, it's there's so much more to like living a healthy lifestyle where you can like make healthy meals and foods that like literally taste like dessert still, yeah. but they're just nourishing and way better for you than different packaged things you can buy. I wish that I had had a sports nutrition guide much earlier on in my athletic career. And I was like, you know what? Like, why don't I just make one? Yeah. So I interviewed a bunch of different elite athletes and I asked them what they wish they had known when they first started out in their career as an Olympic gold medalist, World Series champion, Ironman champion, and then like a bunch of different registered dietitians okay. and kind of compiled all of their expertise and knowledge into the book. So like each athlete gets their own chapter and I kind of tell their story and have one core nutrition concept come from their story. Okay. And then I have a recipe at the end of each chapter teaching you how to implement what you just learned. Okay. Do we find a title yet? Yes. What are we going okay, with? Okay, I'm pretty sure. So I literally posted like yesterday that yeah. I I had the t I had this other title for it. Why why didn't why didn't you go with that one? Because it was trademark. Oh, yeah. was it? Yeah, I got, I got, um, I cannot use it. I literally cannot oh, use it. Oh, so, I like that one. I was, I was, I thought like maybe you kind of like was fading away from it. No, but that's it was it. also kind of difficult because it was athletes and athletes, I had to like, yeah, yeah. I had to like describe what I meant when I said athletes, like E-A-T-S. And so yeah. that was a little complicated yeah. having to give the extra explanation at the end too. So I'm, I'm happy that I'm getting to make it something that just ties more into the overall theme as well. Mm -hmm. But I posted something on Instagram yesterday and TikTok kind of asking people their input on like which one of my idea titles they liked. And I think we're gonna go with the player's plate. Yeah, I yeah. like that. I like that one a lot. I think it's like when you say that to somebody, they kind of already know like right off the yeah. bat, like they know what exactly. you're talking about. I think that's sick. When can the fans uh, cop a book? In September, publishes in September. September, if you're watching this in September, the link will be in the description. Go buy the player's plate. I can't imagine having like, putting together YouTube videos like every week like yeah. you do. That'd be so yeah. stressful. Well, it's been, a, like we talked about downstairs, like it's definitely been a grind for me. Thankful for the NIL space to finally earn some money yeah. to kind of put back into the business. And I've hired two editors now, which has been cool to kind of take that off my plate so I can really focus on you know, my school, lacrosse, and, and social without having to really put all my marbles in the social basket, yeah. which has been really cool. And I think it's just like, it's a necessary step content creators need to take if they want to get bigger. Yeah. And um, I don't know, it's definitely hard for me to do and kind of give up that, that control baby of it all. But I think at the end of the day, you know, it's trial and error with these editors and it's all about the process and, and you mm -hmm. definitely know about it as well. What's like, been you feel like the biggest help or advice you'd give to someone who's like trying to work with an editor yeah i think it was tough for me at first because i'm such a control freak around you know youtube because it like is like, yeah because it's a one-man job you film you edit you post and i think kind of giving up a little bit of control was hard for me and i think first of all like finding an editor i'm a true believer in in taking the time to kind of go through that interview process with them yeah. i think was big um, figuring out, you know, have they edited social content before, not just like movies and kind of th theatrical stuff. Going through that process, asking them questions and figuring out who they are as a person. I'm big with like working with similar like-minded people as myself yeah. that are down to earth. And hiring editor, I think it was just simple for me. It was like, I like the person, they want to work with me long-term and let's do it. And I think after they were hired, um, just con continuing that, that interview process of, hey, this is what I like, this is what I don't like in my videos. I mean, kind of ironing that out. It just takes time. I think the biggest thing was like, 
I don't want to do it because it's going to take a long time and it's not as bad as you think. Like that's something yeah. Mr. Beast has always said. He's like, hire an editor. Like the first couple months will be okay, but after that, it's fine. Okay. Um, so I definitely learned a lot and it's something I really can't see myself going back to editing my videos because I think my style is pretty unique, but once I tell somebody kind of the, the secret sauce of it, you yeah. know, they can figure it out. Yeah. So. It just takes the time to yeah. be able to write down exactly what you like yeah. about your videos. Will we ever see a consistent Emily Cole on YouTube? I am not making any promises for that. Probably not. <laughs> Maybe when you graduate? <laughs> Probably not. Probably no. not. I mean, I like I wouldn't put it past me that I'd, I'd post them, but I don't think I'd ever put the pressure on myself to have a consistent. Mm. YouTube is definitely more date and time regimented when TikTok is just kind of more free flowing and that's something like, I think you're definitely better at the TikTok side than me because like, like having an idea, filming and posting it and with me it's like, okay, how am I going to edit and like, okay, I'm just using an iPhone. It's just, it's just like yeah. two different things and I think like you strive on TikTok so much better. Just like, I think the way you put together your TikToks is just like, it fits the algorithm and the app so much better. Well, thank you. Yeah. I, I like... I appreciate that. I feel like it's crazy how different all the platforms are. Like yeah. having different niches and then advantages to each one that play to different people's strengths. Yeah. All right, well now we can hop into your guys' questions. I posted an Instagram story last night telling you guys to ask questions for Emily and I and we're gonna answer them. I'm excited, right I haven't seen them yet, so. First of all, are you a pineapple on pizza girl? <sighs> Oh no. no. Oh no. No? No. Okay. I've yeah. never ordered that in my life. Uh, favorite part about being a college athlete? The community. I feel like just being able to reach out to another college athlete and have them be like, I don't know, you're kind of part of the group and it's much more likely that you'll be able to like quickly make that connection and make that friend. I'm just really grateful for that and I think it's something that will forever change my life, being able to have that unique bond with different people right? yeah kind of going off that connection point if just like you're on a huge team and her team is obviously bigger than mine but you're on a team of people like that are your best friends and like you're grinding together and this and that and i think it just makes your your relationship so much deeper and like i think the alumni space too which is really cool is something that i don't really think about until last year just like how many connections especially going to school like ohio state like it's yeah. huge i think i meet somebody that knows a buckeye or is an alumni from ohio state literally everywhere i go yeah and it's like that's the cool part it's like i don't know this person but he was an alumni so like now i'm already connected and i think mm -hmm. like that's a that's kind of i've cool. actually had a lot of people that now because of you they oh, feel really? like co connected to me they're like yeah i went to ohio state oh, and then, and I, like, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like i didn't go there but yeah i like that who hits a meaner frog can you please hit the frog for the fans out no, there? no no you no. can't hit the no, frog you can put the clip of of the other one i'm not doing Emily, it the fans <laughs> want to see you is it can we hit it together no <sighs> <laughs> you, right, you guys, you guys heard it here first. Who has to train harder for their sport? I think it's definitely her. I think it's just like I mean, we do. We definitely do a lot more sprinting, but like I can't go out and run 12 miles like <laughs> at all. It's just running is objectively just purely based on yeah. your fitness, and so I think I think whenever I, it's a sport like that, it's hard to compete. When you, I mean, obviously there are plenty of other things that y'all work on that we don't have to really yeah. like technique and like going and watching film and things like that. Whereas it's really just getting out there and running. <laughs> yeah, I think like what you do could be like the hardest sport to train for. Like, There's also the like, sports. I feel like similar sports are like swimming. Yeah, and then yeah. Gymnastics is also crazy hard. Yeah, go to Chipotle order. Oh gosh, I actually don't go to Chipotle that often because what? we have a, we have a like, basically a Chipotle restaurant right there. I think I go three times a week. I'm pretty basic. I'd probably say I get the lettuce, brown rice, black beans, corn, Pico, chicken, and guac. Okay, I'm much more than that. I'm a brown rice lettuce guy, similar. Black beans, I do double chicken, corn, guac, cheese, a side burrito, mix it up, and then put it in a burrito. Who would win in a race? Ooh. In a one lap race, who would win? Do you Definitely think you, me. Do you, you think kidding so? me? Oh See, my I God. actually think out of everything we would do, you play on the cross, me running, this is probably, a one, lap race? one lap a race, a 400. Yeah. There's so much endurance in a 400. You can beat me in anything longer than one lap. That's what I'm thinking, I think this. I think it'd have to be shorter. You think so? I think it'd have to be shorter. Think I would beat you in a 100 or no? 
I mean, I'm not going to say I think you'd beat me in anything, but I think it's Ooh, you know, I like I think that. You'd have a better chance if it's shorter. I don't know. If, we, if, we're, if we're together again this summer, we're going to do that. We yeah. have to. We try it out. Cat or dog person? He's a dog, for sure. I've only ever had dogs. Really? Yeah. Okay. But I wouldn't be against getting a cat. I do like them. Not really like a pet guy. Like, I could do without That's a tough. pet. Where will you live? when you grow up. So I always say, my favorite place to say is Colorado. I'm obsessed with everything about Colorado, like just the lifestyle and like the environment and the community, but I cannot do the winters. Yeah. I am a Texas girl through and through. I cannot do the cold. So we're gonna have to figure that part out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think mine would be definitely out of college, New York City. I know I've talked yeah. about that before. Like I have a family and, and have kids. I definitely wanna move out of the city. I don't, I don't have no idea where yeah. that is, but I'm definitely- Well, there are a lot of close first. little towns to New yeah. York City. You could still be like super close. Yeah, I feel like I always say the Hamptons, but I've never been to the Hamptons. I just always yeah. felt like, I mean, I know that's like a pretty wealthy area, but. I don't know, I think that would be pretty cool. Did you remember the suit? Funny story, actually. This is a good story. <laughs> I was coming down yesterday. I have a wedding this summer and I don't have a suit. Um, I can't really wear an all black suit during a summer wedding. So I'm coming down. I've already been in talks with my parents because I need a suit for uh, this wedding in the summer. So I'm coming down like, why don't I just hit Tickner's up, the place I went when I forgot my suit in the winter. I went to the South Point Mall and went to Tickner's. And as I was walking in, our guy, Mac, that helped me out last time Absolute I was in there. Legends. As soon as I walk in, he's like, Mitchell Pelkey, what's up? I'm like, yo. And uh, we got to talk in and it's funny, he actually doesn't have social media, but so many people were sending him the video after it went live and everything. Really? <laughs> yeah, and he said like their headquarters is in Columbus and he said like the headquarters, like his boss's boss like called him was like, Awesome job, this oh and that. Oh my gosh, yeah, so that's funny. amazing. So I got a picture with him yesterday and got another new suit from my guy, Mac. You know, that could be my go-to suit guy from now on. Oh, absolutely. It's like anytime Mitchell needs a suit now, he's like right. coming to North Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> for Emily, biggest piece of advice for a young college runner. There are so many different things, but I think the main thing is just not rushing your journey and your process. Yeah. I think that this can go for a lot of different athletes and not just running. Um, but you know, if, if you are lucky enough to see a lot of success in high school and get to play in college, you get to college and you have all these big expectations and big goals. And then you get to college and realize that you're the little fish in a big pond. Yeah. Um, and it takes a while to adjust to college training and really get used to your new environment. There are so many new factors your freshman year that take your energy and it's hard for you to be able to really reach your peak. So I would definitely just say like, don't put a ton of pressure on yourself and really enjoy where you're at every part along the journey because if you keep staying consistent and you know get good sleep and eat well and and are happy you will find success and if you kind of keep putting out these goals like i want to be here i want to be here every time you reach them you're going to want to set a new one and you'll never be happy so really try to work to enjoy the journey along the way I and be present yeah. yeah and i think that it'll pay off for the rest of your life favorite thing about each other I know I've said this a ton, but just how like like-minded we are, like we're so yeah. similar in like our grind aspect. Yeah. And I haven't met like another female like that. And I think like that's definitely my favorite aspect about you. I'd say my favorite aspect about you is like your intentionality. Like I feel like you listen really well. Okay, thank and, you. Like, I never got that before. I appreciate <laughs> that. Um, like whenever you're talking to people, you're always like, I don't know, asking them about different things that they told you forever ago and you like still happen to remember. Like you're yeah. very good about actually like making people feel known and and um, being present. So I appreciate that, thank you. What would you call my hairstyle? A mullet. Is it a mullet or mohawk? I feel like it's more mohawk now that you a say mohawk, that. A mohawk, I know. A mohawk, um, yeah, a, a mohawk. Mini, a, mini, a mohawk, <laughs> actually that's we're coining the new term right now. Hey. <laughs> a mohawk. What is your guys' favorite sport outside of your own? Playing or watching? Let's do both. I think mine's playing golf and then probably watching college football. So I could never pick between volleyball and basketball, like in high school, but I think if I had to pick one to be playing right now, I would definitely say volleyball, just because I like the environment more, and um, watching, probably also volleyball. Okay, Yeah. interesting, all right. I don't know how y'all could not know this, but are you Italian? Yes, I am Is Italian. Is this guy Italian? You I don't think I know that. You're German, right? I don't know what, actually, yeah, no, I'm definitely German a little bit, but I have like some Native American in me too. You got a little, you got probably 2% Italian in you. If you could play on any PLL team, what would it be? Ooh, I'd probably say the Whip Snakes. Um, shout out to Jackson Reed just getting drafted there. Um, I think that's kind of my, my team as well. 
I think when PLL first started, a good family friend and good mentor and a guy I look up to, Dylan Moltz, got drafted to them and played a couple games in that first season for the Whip Snakes. That's kind of the first connection I had with a PLL team. Furthest run you've been on? Ooh, I think it has to be like six and a half miles like two years ago. Okay. That's solid. And uh, yeah, I think like after I'm done playing, that's actually something I want to get into. Like I have like a dream of mine of like crossing the finish line, like the Boston Marathon. Wow. I don't know why. It's that one thing so six funny miles you say that because but... I like, I have no like dreams of like running marathons. People all the time like, have you like, have you run different. a marathon and they're like, you haven't run one yet? And I'm like, no, like I trained yeah. to run a mile. Yeah. <laughs> and you do it so much. It's kind of like, yeah, like, but yeah, I could definitely, I definitely will do one. Like it's just kind of a rite of passage as a runner, but I don't know that I'd ever race one. Furthest run I've been on is actually like 14.1 miles, which I do like every weekend. Oh, God. <laughs> what are the top three items on your bucket list? Go to Italy, meet Casey Neistat. I don't, do you know who that is? You know that? Is? Oh, yeah. He's like a legendary YouTuber. Okay. And First then, person to vlog, basically. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Wow. Kill it, yeah. And then three, I think it's like buy my mom and dad and brother like a huge gift. Like my mom a house or like my dad a nice like Rolex or something like that. That's like oh, yeah. always been on my. Um, yeah, y'all are big on the big gifts. Yeah. Five things on my bucket list. Um, I guess I can say write a book, which will be getting checked off soon. Yay. Um, going to Australia, for sure. Okay. I think I have to go skydiving. Like, really? Yeah. Okay, I was actually, actually going to do that this past summer, and I kind of like chickened out. Really? Yeah. Well, I had a dream that I like felt I, I died. Okay. Right before I was going to skydive, and then I was like, I'm not doing it. Like, maybe God's telling me something here. Sugar or butter on grits? Butter. Easy. I've actually never had grits. I grew up on grits. Like, That's like a southern thing. It's now. very southern. I'm like, I'm Cajun and very southern. I grew up on like etouffee, gumbo, grits. I've, I've actually never had any of those. That's okay. insane. Is the mustache coming back? What were your thoughts when you had the mustache? You never saw me in person with the mustache. Just over. I don't think so, yeah. Did you like it or no? I mean, yeah. I don't think that. I think it's like such a mixed opinion. Like you do whatever you want. If you like it, you do it. Yeah. That's always my philosophy. Good. Who I gives like a that. shit what anyone else hey. does? Tips for time management being a student athlete. I would say the biggest thing, I feel like I it's hard trying to get into social media because when you open up Instagram or TikTok, it's so easy to just yeah. like get wrapped into it. Yeah. It's gonna sound dumb, but like setting the time limits on your apps or turning your notifications off, turning your phone yeah. on, do not disturb. I think that's having, like something we live on. Like whenever I go yeah. to text her, it says it's like, always says, on, like notification yeah. silence. Yeah. And it's just like it's just the easiest way to not like whenever you can get like deep into whatever work you're doing whether it's homework or putting together a video or having a conversation with someone if you've got your phone constantly buzzing you'll never be able to be like fully present so that's the biggest thing that's helped me yeah i've said this so many times but like into my google calendar like I, that's like my bible for me yeah and i continue to like literally live off that thing i have on my phone have it on my laptop and i think just continuing to Set a schedule for yourself and, and from like this hour to this hour, like I'm doing this and then like I can take a break on my phone for a bit. I think it's just like, you gotta map out your schedule. Like for me, it was like mandatory things are like, I have to go to practice every day. And if I have an assignment due that day, I have to do it. So anything around that, that I wanna get done, I have to incorporate it around that. But like those two things I can't change. Mm -hmm. Who would win in a boxing match? Oh my God. The Mitchell. blue, no, 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 the blue devil or Brutus? Oh, I was like, <laughs> I know, like, I, there's like no way answering that question the right way. Top three, gas station snacks. This is gonna be so different, I can already tell. The last time I stopped at the gas station and got a snack, I got a chocolate caramel ice cream bar because it was really? it was close race. Okay, I wouldn't, I would not have expected that. Um, yeah. So my dad like loves bugles. And so okay. that was like always our thing growing up on road trips with like we would get be bugles. And so I don't know, it's just kind of like a thing now where you like, where you, like put them yeah, on your fingers yeah, and really just good. like mess around with them. Yeah. But yeah, definitely those. Okay. I and mean, then probably Sour Patch Dolls. I think mine would be definitely a gallon of water. I always get that when I go in just because it's usually, like, I don't really stop at the gas station yeah. so it's, I'm always on a trip. A gallon of water, some sort of like healthy granola bar, like okay. RX bar or protein bar. Yeah. And then, uh, Almonds or like beef jerky or something. Yeah, and I can definitely see jerky. I'm a big jerky girl too. Yeah, and I think to wrap it up, last question: Are we dating? 
We are not. We are not. <laughs> I think like we've definitely had a lot of conversation about this and I think we kind of mentioned it. I mentioned it in like the reacts video, but we're not dating. I think like we've kept this really, really close like, friend relationship. And I was talking with like my buddies back home, like Emily's still a girl like I can go to for advice or like anything that like I need because like that's the person you are. Yeah. Like I well, appreciate that. I'm just really grateful for like, I don't know, the whole experience in our relationship yeah. too, because I also feel like if we had started dating, it could have just like blown up and then we could have like never yeah, talked again. Yeah. And it's just like, I don't know, now we can just like have this cool experience and like have this relationship for the rest of our lives. Yeah. That's gonna wrap up this video. Follow Emily on TikTok, Instagram, and subscribe to her YouTube channel. She puts yeah, shorts help out. The girl out. I have yeah. like 175 subscribers. So. <laughs> like this video. Let's try to break a thousand likes. I think that's been a common goal here, but I think that's a great number. Subscribe to this channel. We are so close to 40,000 subscribers. It's still surreal saying that when we first did like the whole formal stuff. You were excited about 20. I was excited about 20. I think I was at like 16 and now yeah. I'm like at 32, but insane. Yeah. Subscribe to this channel. Thank y'all so much for everything. Just like yeah. making this whole journey a reality. It's been so cool. I know. I'm just really grateful for y'all. It's been surreal and um, wouldn't change it for the world, but we will see you guys in the next video. Deuces.